Good morning, Facebook Live. This is Robin Kirbygato. Welcome to today. It is going to be a blessed day of the Lord. Why? Because God has taken out the trash through Jesus Christ, our hope and glory. Amen. As you join in, be super hopeful and expectant. God is going to encourage you and strengthen you. Listen, if you are not subscribed to my YouTube channel, subscribe to it. Yesterday, just FYI, I did peanut butter energy balls. They are phenomenal. I had Rich do one this morning when we went to our 4 a.m. workout for legs. And, oh my goodness, y'all, he said it was a game changer. It totally changed his workout, whereas before he was always dragging because he had no fuel for the race. We're going to look at that as I talk about trash talk and really expose the lies of the enemy against our soul so that we don't have trash talk in our members, amen, and we're able to abound in grace, mercy, and truth, having the joy of the Lord as our strength. One thing I've learned in my history of now being almost 57 years old in about a month and a half, y'all, I have learned that it is best to only think and speak good things in relation to others. It doesn't mean we don't set up boundaries. We absolutely set up boundaries. But I'm going to bring this up today, especially in relation to knowing that we will have to give an account for every idle word we speak. And also, I think about James 3. James 3 is a pinnacle, a mantra, so to speak, of being a minister of the gospel of truth. And when I say I've got a degree in ministry, what I'm referring to is a degree in the fires that I've been through as a minister of truth. I've not been through a seminary or taken in relation to theology school. I am self-taught at a uh, and autodactic. I can't say that correctly. I always mispronounce that word. But you know what? The degrees of fire you've been through of being purified, as Jesus told the church of Laodicea, that I asked for you to buy of me gold refined in the fire. And that gold is the degree of fire that has purified your heart and mind. Listen, this world can just pile up trash on us. And so we have to guard our hearts. And I want to also mention to you, especially you women out there, and you know, it's not just women, but just because of the history of hormone changes affecting women and their perceptibility, as well as their mood, Listen, women, please get your hormones checked and also stay on top of having a good diet, getting the essential nutrients, especially things like alpha lipoic acid in relation to making sure that's good in you. But as far as essential nutrients, choline is an essential nutrient and just message me and I'll send you my choline video. So let's look at trash talk, trash talk. This morning, as I was looking at my Facebook memories, I just noticed pictures from many years ago, not of immediate family, but just pictures in which people were standing by others in different pictures and they were laughing and just smiling ear to ear. And then there was a picture where they were standing by me and their face was just not even just flat. It was just like detestable, repelling repelled by me being next to them. And so, you know, what came to my heart was trash talk. Trash talk is what the Holy Spirit was telling me where people have talked trash about me around them. And so it affected them and their perception of me. And I think about y'all, if people will talk trash about others, and I'm not talking about getting counsel, there's always a space to get counsel to pour out your heart to loved ones, to friends, to let them know to pray for you. I'm not talking about that. What I'm talking about is people that just talk trash about other people and they don't think their poop stinks. And it's so funny because there is a reel on Instagram. It is just hilarious. And in this reel, it shows a woman in a restaurant and it's a spoof. It's just, well, it's just a comedy thing. And so this couple is eating in this fine dining place and all these people are sitting around them. And the woman gets up at the table and starts like doing all these stretches and looks like she's in a type of class, a stretching class is all I can say. And so the man that's with her is like, what are you doing? And she said, I have air in my stomach. And she starts farting in the restaurant. 
and the guy is telling her, look, you are, you know, passing gas in this fine dining establishment in people's faces while they're eating. And she says, no, it's just air. It's just air. I'm releasing air. Is air caught up in my stomach? And she keeps just doing these stretches and just passing gas. And he tells her, he says, listen, you're not releasing air. You're releasing these farts and it stinks. And she's like, no, no, it doesn't. No, it's just air. Just smell. And y'all, that is kind of what it's like with trash talk. It's the same thing. And so God showed me where people talk trash about others, they think their poop doesn't stink. And I've got this saying that God gave me many years ago, doing God's Bible healing of the soul in relation to the dung gate, Chris, where I teach about Satan's gone and dung it again and dung his poop, where he's like trying to throw poop on this beautiful white righteous robe that's on the saints. And Satan's just trying to throw poop speak bad about others that's what it's like when people speak bad about others they're just taking the dung of the enemy and they're flinging it on them and so that's where satan's gone and done it again and so this is where i'm going to get into trash talk because saints this is one huge litmus test to expose self-righteousness to expose pride where we think our poop doesn't stink and we're always pointing fingers at other people. It's interesting because in the month of July, God has had me doing an Isaiah 58 fast. And I posted a picture of my, our mileage on our vehicle that we got last year, November. And it has 58, 5,858 miles. It's 5858. And I just keep thinking about Isaiah 58 where God says, you know, the true fast is where you're not bringing in strife and you're not pointing the finger of scorn. That is the litmus test if we're trash talking other people. Are we bringing a demoralization to them? Are we scorning them? And so we have to remain humble, amen? And when I get to this space, let's go deeper and let's see the motives and intentions, Hebrews 4.12, where the word comes in like a double-edged sword and it's going between intents and motives. Let's look at the motives and intentions behind trash talk. And this is what the Lord showed me. He said, Robin, imagine, and he brought up Hebrews 12 too, where Jesus went to the cross, despising the shame. And so the joy was set before him, hey Teresa, to go to the cross for you and I and to take our shame away. And Jesus despised it because he did not own it. He was just taking the trash out, okay? And so God showed me, he said, Robin, imagine taking the trash out. And so I'm very grateful because you can't see, but the trash used to be all the way down here, way behind the building, way behind it. And I live all the way up there, five flights up. And so I would have to go five flights down and take the trash all the way behind the building and then go back five flights. And it was a workout, but I am grateful that now for the probably the last almost year, there has been a trash receptacle outside our door and we have trash valet, trash valet. Thank you, Jesus. You know, that is like the Holy Spirit, trash valet, that Jesus took the trash out. What is the trash? It's shame. So the enemy wants to bring shame for you to own that identity in order to push you down, to restrain you. Your own prison is right here in between your mind. Hey, Sherry, I love you. Your own prison is right here in your head. It's your reality. What is real to you? It doesn't mean that you don't believe it's happening. You do believe it's happening but it still might not actually be real. But you know what, it's real to you. And so this becomes your own prison. And what's interesting is mindfulness, mind of Christ. God really had me unpack that in relation to hypnosis and that every stronghold is a hypnosis. 
and he has me introduced and that book mindfulness about a christ is a great book on deliverance it is beyond phenomenal oh y'all it is just beyond phenomenal and this next book which i've returned to editing again and writing editing and writing the forbidden fruit the spiritual dis-ease i've got almost 300 pages by the time it's said and done it'll probably be close to 700 pages so i've got 400 more pages to write and it's this the forbidden fruit the spiritual dis-ease is a sequel to mindfulness by christ and so what is hypnosis hypnosis is the power of suggestion it's not you laying down and somebody putting a finger on in front of you saying follow my finger and speaking something to you it is the power of suggestion and i bring in eve at the garden of eden where the enemy just put a little suggestion into her mind that all of a sudden it was found anchored in her heart saints all trash talk when we speak trash about others it is because of what is in our heart the treasure when the treasure in our heart is christ jesus whatever comes out of the mouth like jesus said in matthew 12 and that's in chapter 7 of mindfulness amount of christ it takes chapters 1 through 6 to get you ready for chapter 7 which is a chapter of deliverance and it gets into almost all of matthew 12 and so in matthew 12 jesus says it's not what goes into a man's mouth that defiles him defiles his body it's what comes out of his mouth that defiles him y'all and i just want to be real and as i've been telling rich especially in this isaiah 58 fast which i find it incredible that today at the end of july we got one more day at the end of july y'all today the mileage on our vehicle was 5858 5858 and in this month god has had called me to an isaiah 58 fast and what is a true fast to do it is to humble us it's not to humble others it's not so that we can say oh they're so bad no it's to humble us just like the prophet isaiah in isaiah 6 we don't know but he might have been in a fast we don't know but when he came in face-to-face -face glory of god oh let me tell you what the prophet was humbled and he realized his poop stinks okay he realized he had unclean lips he realized his heart things were coming out of his mouth because what y'all listen this world is full of trash this world is full of trash we see trash uh you know spaces we see sanitation fields we see trash in the ocean we see trash in the rivers y'all there's trash everywhere don't you think that that is symbolic of what is also going on in the spiritual realm amen oh thank you janice i love you what's going on in the spiritual realm y'all there's so much trash let's be the ones that pick it up all right let's pick up the trash let's not put it out there what's so interesting i took a picture of it and i posted it because right after i left to take rich to work because i take him to work and pick him up every day because his Parkinson's meds can make him sleepy. And you know, if you don't use it, you lose it. And so he's working to make sure his mental cognition is at the optimal level. And so work has really helped him. And we're gonna just take it as the Lord leads us. And it's really helped as his cognition has actually increased. I thought we were gonna have to get him to retire last summer because it had greatly declined. But because of the phototherapy patches, the choline, the diet, just all the things that we've added, the different tweakings that God has given me, his cognition is just like it used to be. It's absolutely amazing. And so I take him to and from work and on the way to work, I got behind this state government truck that worked for UAB because we live right here by UAB. And it had trash bins in it. Y'all, I've never seen that. The seven years I've lived here taking Rich to and from work where these trash cans are just standing in the back of a truck. Y'all, I cannot help but think of how that affects our destiny, our dreams. 
So yesterday, and I took a picture of it and I posted it and I'm like, I don't know what this tag means. I don't know I'm behind it. And so the tag was B-I-G-S-T-E, which I saw big and I'm like, is it big, bigs? And what was in my Facebook memories today was dream big and actually was in my Facebook memories yesterday. But in my Facebook memories today was a personalized tag, biggest, B-I-G, three S-T. And the three was for E, biggest. Y'all, and then it hit me. That personalized tag that I took a picture of yesterday was biggest. Okay, you know what? What is the greatest hindrance to your destiny, to your God-given dreams that he has for you? It's trash. It's trash. If the receptacle, your temple, is full of trash and you're speaking trash, guess what you're not doing? You're not pursuing your destiny. You know, sometimes it's wisdom when God allows people to move away from you, give a break to the relationship, so to speak. Sometimes that's wisdom because it's protection because they might be trash talking you. And you know, you can feel it. You can feel it. You can see it on their face in pictures. Like I mentioned, it, it wasn't my immediate family that was in my picture today, but it was just pictures from many years ago. And when people were with other people standing with them, taking pictures, they were smiling and, you know, grin to grin, ear to ear grin. But when they were in a picture with me, it was just like, like I detest this person, I despise them. And God said, you know what? They've heard trash talk about you, Robin. You have to be careful about talking about other people. I'm not talking about getting counsel, okay? I'm not talking about getting prayer, getting encouragement. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about when you influence others to see other people badly. Because you know what? That's hypnosis. And that's why in the Proverbs, Proverbs 6, God talks about, and we also see Proverbs 16, that God detests it. He hates people speaking bad about other people. Why? Because you can have the power of suggestion and you can hypnotize people into thinking poorly about others and to having the same trash in your receptacle about that person. They can own that trash and then just start having this despising, you know, outlook on another person. That is shame. That is what Jesus took to the cross. And so let's make sure the trash isn't in us. Let's humble ourselves because what does Isaiah 58 say? It says a true fast is not mechanical. It's not weight loss, okay? A true fast is performance. I'm thinking about lately, and you know I bring things in from Pilates. And so, you know, a lot of people are always going to a workout in a fasted state for weight loss. And let me tell you what, you're not gonna perform at your optimal level, you're not. I've been there, especially as you get older, and especially if you're female and you get older, and I can tell you even if you're a male and get older, because I've seen it with my husband today, since I've added these peanut butter energy balls, which I did a video on, it's on my YouTube channel, watch it. If you're not on it, subscribe, message me, I'll give it you a link. And so I've added these peanut butter energy balls, and so Rich did a leg workout today, and at 4 a.m., we do our workouts near about. And so at about 3.45, he was eating the peanut butter energy ball that I've made recently, I started making. And y'all, it was a game changer for his workout. He had a wonderful workout, why? Because he had glucose for the brain, alertness, glucose going in for muscle use. You know, when you're working out, you want to use glucose for your fuel source to fuel the workout. And so if you're going to a workout in a fasted state, you know, if you've got some glucose that's been stored up in your muscle and it's, you go through uh, gluconeogenesis to break it down, great. But you know what? It can still affect your performance if you don't have enough. And so fueling up like that peanut butter energy ball that has peanut butter, flaxseed, oats, uh, raisins, uh, dark chocolate and honey 
if you don't have something to give you just a little bit of fuel, your performance level isn't going to be up here. It's going to be down here. And so God began to speak to my heart. And he said, uh, as he spoke to my heart, yes, amen, Sherry, it is true. Uh, as he spoke to my heart today, he said, Robin, tell my people it's not about weight loss. It's about performance. And you know, there's, and he said, a lot of people look at Isaiah 58, a fast of God, hey, Amy, as weight loss and not about performance as a Christ likeness, as the image of Christ. I said, oh God, that is good. And God said, Robin, think about it. When you go to work out now, you're not going in a fasted state and you're not looking at it as weight loss. I don't go to Pilates and say, oh yay, I'm in it for weight loss. No, I don't do that. If you have that mindset, you are totally missing it and you're not going to be at your optimal level. You're going to miss it and God is going to keep sending you this wisdom, this counsel and knowledge and you're going to just dismiss it because you're in it for weight loss. You're not in it for performance in, in, in that enhanced performance. You know those uh, distribution, I've got my distribution patches that I keep on me. Let me see if I've got some. I usually, I do. I usually keep them in my uh, my fanny pack. And so it says, Robin Kirby Gatto, life on high definition. I know you can't see it because it's backwards. It says life on high definition. And it says phototherapy patch, peak performance, peak performance. And it's again life on high definition and if you want the information message me and I'll on YouTube I'll put some links to email me but listen that's what it's about if you are in workout in a fast for weight loss and not about peak performance as a Christian you're gonna miss it and you're not gonna have fuel for your Christian walk you're not gonna have fuel to get through the trials to endure to pass the test and you're gonna keep going around the same mountain for 40 years because you're in it for weight loss and not peak performance of Christ Jesus in you, the hope of glory. And that is the real deal. So saints, let's humble ourselves. Let's take a breath. Let's stop pointing fingers at others, no matter what they do, no matter what they do. Can we just examine our own heart? Can we just take our heart to the altar of God to be operated on? Hebrews 4, 12 through 16. Because when you do and you're focused on Christ, guess what? You go to God's throne of grace. You obtain mercy. You move forward. So let's not do trash talk. Let's do God talk. Amen. God bless you. I love you. Have an amazing day. And I will see you tomorrow in Jesus' name.